Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's Monday. It's uh, it's nine o'clock. It's time for a five by five. Now, uh, I'm back this week with a slightly different five by five. I'm back with another performer highlight. Now, these have been a huge hit on the channel and uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of them. We are going to be bringing back the original five by five. I don't want to do this every single week. We want to kind of mix it up. Sometimes we're going to do the more traditional five by five. Sometimes we're going to do a performer highlight. We're going to see how things go. But this week, very excited, I'm going to be talking about one of my favourite magicians of all time. Something that a lot of, somebody who a lot of newer magicians might not be aware of, especially if they're more focused on close-up magic, and that's Jeff Hobson. Now, who is Jeff Hobson? Well, Jeff Hobson, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the greatest comedy magicians in the world of all time. I have been a big fan of Jeff Hobson for years. He has been a regular mainstay of various Vegas shows over the last couple of decades. Uh, he's appeared at magic conventions all over the world. He was in my favourite touring uh, stage show of all time, Carnival of Londres, along with uh, Mark Kalen and Ginger Lee. He was in The Illusionists, uh, and he continues to perform at a very high level. He's created magic, uh, many, many tricks. And although he does close up, I, I think it's fair to say that this is a guy that's focused mainly on performing on stage. That's where he's best. And uh, because of that, a lot of magicians that maybe are new into magic might not be aware of his work that much because they're focused on learning magic from, from close-up magicians. The thing is, close-up magicians can learn so much from somebody who performs on stage, especially somebody like Jeff Hobson, because Jeff Hobson really... Um, is funny. Like, it, the, the comedy comes first with Jeff, but the magic is also really strong. Now, the other thing about Jeff Hobson is he is completely and totally 100% aware of his character. Um, Jeff plays this very camp, um, almost gay character, which isn't the case, and, and he plays it perfectly. Um, and, and he comes across as... Uh, it's, it's just hilarious to see. If you don't know Jeff Hobson, he's funny without even doing anything, just prancing out on stage. He's hilarious. And I've seen so many routines over the years that Jeff's done because I've seen him live a few times. And every time I've seen him, uh, I've just been blown away. And it's very difficult to condense it down to five routines. I know there were a couple that I had to put in, uh, but I think there's a lot that we can learn from Jeff Hobson when it comes to characterization, especially, but also comedy, how to infuse magic and comedy. All these elements together, Jeff is so good at. So this week's 5x5 five five is all on Jeff Hobson and five routines um, that I think that um, well, sum up exactly how amazing the guy is. And we're going to start off, I've got it here, with probably Jeff's most well-known trick which is the card to mouth routine. Now, if you've not seen it, let's have a look at a performance and then we'll talk about it. Well, look at you, look at you, look at me. <laughs> As you heard, my name is Jeff Hobson, which is a very magical name. First name Jeff came from my mother, last name Hobson came from a friend of my father's. Ta-da. <laughs> I'm the reason magicians invented the word poof. <laughs> I perform comedy and magic, so whatever you don't laugh at, that's the magic. <laughs> I'll just show you just a little bit, uh, a piece of the show. Uh, we can't do everything, obviously, but we're going to give it just a little taste. If you don't mind, take on a few moments. Um, there's normally in our shows, we have stairs that go down to the audience, and we do a lot of audience participation and uh, everything like that. But there is one gentleman. Oh, we already got him. Look, look at Bill. He's already there. I already I asked Bill to come on up so we wouldn't have to actually you know, hop up on the stairs. Thank you so much. Nothing is pretty arranged in advance. Oh, you like this? Yeah, I know you're looking at this. I, I call it my Liberace starter kit. <laughs> oh, isn't it wonderful? I hope you enjoy it, because you bought it. <laughs> the shoes, huh? Pretty cool. I wrestled Brute Paul to the ground for these. <laughs> so we both won. <laughs> from, sir? Reedsburg. Hmm? Reedsburg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like Deerfield? It's by Wisconsin Dells. Ah. <laughs> well, it's all right. I'm going to get this thing going. Not that you guys have anything better to do in Wisconsin. <laughs> Just teasing. 
Hey, is that our dinner? Mm. Yep. <laughs> hey, this is fine. Good, Bill. Thanks for coming up here to play cards. Good, good. Brand new pack of playing cards, sanitized wrapper for your protection. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'll do it again. Huh? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, oh. Try? No, I mean the. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'll do that again. <laughs> Who are you with there, Bill? You're all your wife. That's oh, high. So here we go. Pick a card, anyone you want. Quick, quick, go, go. There you go. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me see. Over a hat. <laughs> there we go. Nope, we don't want that one. Here, take the whole pack. Anyone you want? One una por favor grass. Yes. Espanole. Como esta frijoles means how you bean. <laughs> take this pen when they were giving away at my bank. <laughs> Sign your name right across the face of the card. Bill, Bill, backwards, lib. Whatever you want to, right across the face. Good man, thank you. Sorry, it's chained down. I just met you. <laughs> I don't trust you. <laughs> place the card at my fingertips, face outwards so I cannot see the face. Can everyone see a signature? Everyone, everyone? Mm -hmm. No? Right there. <laughs> no, I do not know what this card is. Look at that in front of you. He's good. <laughs> Scratching the old bastard on its own. Leave it alone. <laughs> His card, his signature, most people say, Trickster, if you're really good, why don't you let Bill shuffle those cards now, I say. Are you busy? You alright? Good man. Good. Take the pack. Shuffle, shuffle. Mixy, mixy. Go ahead. I'll be right here. <laughs> you want me, don't you? You're thinking about it. Where's the, where's the way to get her? Where's the, oh, hi. Oh, she's waving back. Just not using as many fingers. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> I bent my cards. Thanks. Watch as I now perform. Ladies and gentlemen, sleight of tongue. Easy. Watch as I place the pack of cards inside my mouth. Locate his card, Bill's card, with a signature with my tongue inside my mouth. And fold the card three times. Do you believe this? No. Okay, yeah. Boy, you are married, aren't you? you can't make it <laughs> I think marriage is like a pack of playing cards. You start with two hearts and a diamond, and you end up wanting a club and a spade. <laughs> That's the joke, Billy. Could you take it on and off? <laughs> that is so gross. You were about to do it. Oh, no, you didn't. I'll get it. Here I have one slimy card. <laughs> one card that you picked. You, you, you. <laughs> Most men would stop me, but not you, Billy. <laughs> That's 
call it once, twice, three times, could it be, would it be? Is this your card, your signature? It is, it is his card, his signature. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you say? Bill, 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 So, first off the bat, I'm going to tell you, that's the funniest card to mouth in the entire world. And I'm including Simon Lovell in that list, who is a genius in his own right, but I still think Jeff does the best card to mouth. It's debatable, but I think Jeff still does the best card to mouth. Now, card to mouth, a lot of people think of that as a close-up trick. They don't think of it as a stage trick. And it just shows just how much you can do on stage if you understand timing, if you understand stage presence, if you understand projection, if you understand all of these elements, it's amazing how much you can do and how uh, how you can take something that's kind of small really at the end of the day and play it to a massive theater. I've watched The Illusionists and I watched him do this live in The Illusionists in front of thousands of people in this massive venue and he was doing card to mouth and he literally had everybody on the edge of their seat. And if you actually think about this routine, it's a long routine and there's only one magical payoff at the very, very end. The rest of it is all build up. It's, and, and, and that's the important thing. That's the important thing. It doesn't always have to be about magic, 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 magic. It really doesn't. Um, there's a lot more that, uh, that, that you need to think about when you're performing on stage. You need to think about your characterization, how you're going to present the trick. The other thing is, um, it, when you watch Jeff Hobson perform anything, he looks completely unscripted. He looks like he's completely off the wall and, and, and you don't know what's going to happen or what's going to be going on. But I've watched him perform this many times. Not all the lines, but a lot of the lines are exactly the same every single time. And I'm including lines that look like they're spontaneous, that they're off the cuff. These are lines that are scripted, that are delivered that way every single time. And I think it's, the, it's, 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 it's watching that and understanding the importance of when you're performing on stage and you're doing a routine that you've done a million times, don't fall into that trap that I see a lot of magicians fall into, where they do the same thing over and over again and it looks like they're going through the motions. I've seen a couple of very well-known uh, magicians uh, uh, over here in the UK and and you watch them perform and you can tell that they're just bored they're going through the motions it's sad it really is it's really sad um, Jeff keeps it fresh every single time it looks like he's 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 performing it brand new for the first time so so what we can learn from Jeff by watching this video is first of all don't ever discount any magic trick. You know, a close-up trick can work on stage if you think about the staging and you think about the way that you present it. Also, make sure that every single performance is um, is is fresh. Make sure you're not going through the motions. And 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 people will buy into the fact that these lines are ad-libbed, even if they're scripted. So it shows the importance of scripting as well. And it also shows just how amazing Jeff Hobson is as a performer. Now we go from probably his most well-known trick to his, uh, his second uh, most well-known trick, which is equally as funny. And I don't think there's anyone in the world that does this trick as well as Jeff Hobson. Let's have a look at Jeff performing the egg bag. Now I'd like to show you a trick if I may. But I need a woman, I need a woman. Not really, but for the trick. <laughs> Please don't take me for granted. As I walk into the audience, I look for a woman. And I know how to woo a woman. And what is your name, baby? Tina. Tina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tina, give Tina a round of applause for coming up. Please. You don't mind, do you, Tina? This will be so much fun to shoot. Who was your friend's name? Tim and what? Lorna. Lorna. Oh, yes, that's right. Well, Tina, a little trick for you and me. Do you do tricks? I mean, magic illusion? <laughs> Semantics, ever so important. Step over here. Look out that way, smile big. Are you married or happy? <laughs> married. Married. Ah, good answer, good answer. By a vowel, by a vowel. Good for you. Watch. A bag and an egg. This is called the egg and the bag trick. <laughs> I'm from America, we make things simple. The egg will go inside the bag, the egg will disappear from the tips of my fingers. You will not see where it goes. Then I make the egg reappear inside the bag. Wow. Good, now watch carefully. The egg inside the bag. 
You can always feel the egg in the palm of my hand. Feel the egg, feel the egg. Feel my arms, feel my arms, feel my body, feel my body. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm actually a bisexual. Can't get it for free, I buy it. <laughs> so that's weird. I roll back the sleeves, check it out, is it there? Mm -hmm. Ah, it is. Watch, make it vanish. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Pull the bottom of the bag inside out. No egg? No egg. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. It's the whoosh that does it. <laughs> Look down to the bottom, do you see the egg? Nope. Feel down to the bottom, do you feel the egg? Go down inside. Hmm? Nope. Look down the bottom, do you see the egg? No. Nope. Oh, watch. I hold the bag like this. Pay close attention, you'll be doing this in a moment. I let go with the left hand. <laughs> I grab the egg in the air, do you see it? Nope. Ah, good, you're healthy. <laughs> Does anyone else see it? David. Yes, I do. <laughs> Take the egg. Throw it up in the air. Look at David, he's like, oh. I hold on to the bag, I catch the egg, kaboom. Remember that part? Kaboom. Take the empty hand, go down to the bottom of the bag, grab the egg, pull it out, big round of applause for me. Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Come here. Now watch again, this time we'll do it again in slow motion. Pay close attention, watch the egg inside the bag. You don't feel the egg in the palm of my hand, feel the egg, feel the egg. From my arm, from my arm, from bottom, bottom. Mm. You like this. <laughs> It is still there, right? <laughs> Vanish in slow motion. speed. Ooh, freaked me out too, David. <laughs> Look down to the bottom, do you see the egg? Nope. Feel down to the bottom, do you feel the egg? Nope. Look down to the bottom, do you see the egg? Nope. No, watch, hold on to the back like I have it. Two fingers on the inside, thumb on the outside. Pinch tightly, two fingers on the inside, thumb on the outside. Pinch tightly, look down inside, do you see the egg? Nope. No, hold your hands together. This is great, this is great, this is so good, I'm gonna watch it myself. <laughs> hold the bag just like you have it, hold it closer to yourself. Closer, closer, closer. Oh, happy bag. <laughs> hold the hands up in front of you. Let go with the left hand. Good choice. <laughs> now, take, this is cool, what's wrong with your hand? That's all right, that's, that's fine, you let go. Grab the egg in the air. <laughs> well, I think the egg's having lots of fun there. <laughs> no, just hold on to it. You don't cook, do you? No. Throw it up in the air, quick. Ah, look at David, uh, good. <laughs> hold this hand out. Catch the egg, go kabunk. Did you feel it? Ah, but it's there. Show the hand empty. Now slowly, Tina, slowly go down inside the bag, grab the egg, pull it out, show everybody at the tips of Tina's fingers, the egg, she is amazing. Very, very good. You see, she put the egg back too quick. See, the egg now changed into oh, the watch I found on your wrist. <laughs> Ooh, he is from Detroit, isn't he? <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's no big deal, no big deal, because I also have David. David, I think I have yours. Oh, and Sparky's, I have yours. And the gentleman right next to him, yes, I have yours. Oh, and Paul, Paul, Les, Les, come. Could you come up and get your watches, please? All right, but the girls, the girls, everybody, I got everybody. Come on up and get them. Which ones do you want? There, quick, quick, grab your watch. Which one you want? Quick, 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 which one's yours? One. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's give everyone a big round of applause. Thank you very much. So, 
What can I say about that? Just rewind the video and go and watch that again. The egg bag is a classic. You know, Ryland does the egg bag in his show and has done for a, uh, you know, for a very long time. Uh, when Ryland did the bear pit at Blackpool, he did the egg bag. I think the egg bag is an amazing trick. It packs small, plays big, plays to a huge audience. Um, but there's nobody who does it as funny as Jeff Hobson. Um, and it is hilarious. And, and he's taking full use of his character. I mean, the thing that you see here is how how much he understands his character. I mean, it, 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 you know, when he's on stage, he is Jeff Hobson, the performer, right? And the entire egg bag routine is based around that performance. You could not have anybody ever copy this and do it the same way as Jeff. Unless Julian Clary decided to get into magic, there is absolutely no way that you can have anybody do this the same way as Jeff. His, his routine is safe because it is so unique to him. And I think that's one of the most important things that we can learn from watching this performance. You have to make things unique to you. You know, everybody does the egg bag. A lot of people do the egg bag, but they all do it exactly the same way. What Jeff's done is he's taken that trick and he's made it unique to him. And he's built lines and moments and elements into it that fit him as a performer. And I think that's very important. It's just something that we all should do as magicians, and sometimes we don't. The other thing that I think it shows is you don't have to search for that latest and greatest trick to be famous. Sometimes it's okay to look at the old hat tricks or the classics of magic. The egg bag is a perfect example. It's not exactly new, it's not exactly dynamic, and I know that there's going to be a lot of people that would go, now. Nah, I'm not going to use the egg bag in my show, it's too old hat, I need something new, I need something exciting. Well, I'm telling you right now, it doesn't always have to be new. It doesn't always have to be exciting. Um, Jeff has made a career for himself, performing in Vegas his entire life performing headlining numerous shows all over the strip and he's done it with a little cloth bag that I guarantee you numerous magicians have dismissed because it's too simple or it's not funny or it doesn't make any sense and why are you making an egg appear and this is a guy that's killing it at a very high level with exactly the same prop so don't dismiss a routine just because you think it's old don't but you know don't dismiss a routine if you don't think it's going to fit your character look at it and say well how can I make this work for me and, and the other thing is, look at the card to mouth and look at the egg bag. He doesn't have anything else on stage with him. It's just him and it's a volunteer. And that's him. It's just him and a volunteer. He doesn't have big props. Now, he has used pick props. Anybody who's seen him in the Carnival of Wonders will know that. Anyone who's seen him in The Illusionists will know that. But a lot of the time, with his classic routines, it's just him and it's a volunteer and it's a prop. He doesn't have a case with him or anything. And, and it means that everything is laser focused on that performance as opposed to being distracted with everything else that's going on. Very important. And the other thing is, I want you to notice his use of volunteers. You've seen two routines by Jeff Hobson now where he's brought volunteers up on stage and he's got them involved. He's having fun with them, but I don't think at any point he's making them feel bad. He's not insulting them. You see some performers that make people feel really bad. When Why do people not come up on stage when they see a magic show? It's because they're worried they're going to be ridiculed, right? That's, that's what people worry about. I don't think that Jeff... Jeff, that anybody who's watching Jeff perform would ever think that because a lot of the time the jokes are on him, not on the spectator. The spectator's having a wonderful time and his, his management of volunteers, I think, is just exceptional. So now let's go on to a third routine. And this is uh, a completely different style of routine to what you've seen. Uh, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. We'll speak about it in a second. But this is, what did I write it down as? The cigarette routine. Let's have a look at the cigarette routine. Magic. Illusion. <laughs> Smoking's romantic. If you can't see this in the back, 
Tough luck, should have got it here earlier for the better seats. <laughs> Save it, if that's all you got, save it. <laughs> you wanna try? Oh, now you're worried about your health. Oh, I see. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Now, I've never really done much cigarette manipulation because I don't smoke. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of some types of cigarette manipulation. Um, you know, the cigarette eating act. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I remember watching that many, many years ago. It was when I was at camp with Brad Henderson. And uh, um, watching it was just an incredible... It was, it was like, I, and I was like, how is this working? I was like, the only option I can see is he's actually eating them. And I believe Pete Furman bought the rights to that afterwards and um, after he passed away. But anyway, this is a completely different thing. It's literally a two minute bit with a cigarette. And he's doing very, very basic sleight of hand. He's doing a vanish. He's doing an appearance. He's doing another vanish. There's nothing really mind blowing here. And it, but, but there's something that we can learn from watching him. First of all, it's a two minute bit, but the entire way through, it's engaging, it's funny, it's interesting. He's built in moments that fits into his character. I guarantee you that moment when he unzips his fly and he pulls the match out from, him, from, from inside his pants, I guarantee you that that moment is as funny as anybody else, any other magician in the world, any funny part in their show, and that's as funny as anything that anybody else does. Because by that point, when people watch this, they bought into his character, they know the type of person he is, they bring this out, he brings this out, this match, and he doesn't say anything about it, and he just likes the thing, and it's like, hey, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Such a funny line, such a funny moment, and, and this is such an entertaining routine, with a cigarette. Literally all he's doing is opening a pack of cigarettes. The first minute is him opening a pack of cigarettes and putting a cigarette in his mouth. The second minute is him doing a couple of vanishes and producing a match. There's nothing to it really when you think about it. But the audience are literally again on the edge of their seat. So this brings us back to the first video which is just because something's close up doesn't mean that you can't do it on stage. Now he performs this on the strip in front of thousands of people. Do you think, like, it, it, let's be honest here. You know, if you had the opportunity to perform in Vegas and I said to you, okay, why don't you just vanish a cigarette and then reproduce it under your elbow and then do a, a, a lip match production? You'd be like, what? Are you, are you having a laugh? Are you crazy? But that's what he's done here. So what can we learn from this? What we can learn from this is to stop putting the emphasis of everything into the prop that's being used. Mm, this prop, this prop. Oh gosh, you know, I have to buy this prop because this prop's going to make me famous. I have to buy this prop because this prop is going to make me famous. No, what's going to make you famous is how entertaining you are. Remember, magic is entertainment. That's the key. The most important thing is that you are an entertainer first and a magician second. Yes, the magic has to be strong, but more importantly, it has to be entertaining. And people have to buy into your character and the magic has to fit the character that you're playing. And this whole two minute bit encompasses and embodies all of that perfectly. Go watch it again. It's great. And it's just a vanish in a production. Anyway, uh, let's have a look at the third one. Now, this is very, very interesting. I really am very excited about talking about this. So um, I remember uh, the, the next trick that you're going to see. I remember uh, watching a tutorial of how to do this. And this is but by, by him. I bought, I bought his lecture and uh, watched him lecture how to do this. And the second that I saw it, I was like, that. this is going into my act. And it did. And it stayed in there for a long time. Uh, it's the popped and restored balloon dog. 
and this video is actually shot at a, uh, a kind of a promo event for the Illusionists tour. So it's not like in a proper theatre, and uh, there's some very interesting points I want to make about this. So let's have a look at this performance right now. How cool is this? Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to uh, introduce you all to, uh, well, a little bit of entertainment for, for today. He's, uh, he's actually known as the trickster in the Broadway hit show called The Illusionist, which will be here right inside of this theater. Uh, October 11th through the 16th, and it'll be the greatest show you'll ever see. Oh, I remember you, you last, that's great. A few, who was here the first show, by the way? Anyway, oh, we have a few of you, okay. Well, I'm gonna do a couple things, it's all right, don't worry, we'll do a few things the same, but it's all right. Um, well, here, let's let's find out. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll do a little bit of magic for you. Now, I have to tell you that it's not exactly what you would see in the show, because in the show, in the actual illusionist show, we have spectacle magic, uh, we have uh, grand illusions, we have uh, suspenseful magic, dramatic magic, dangerous magic, we also have fun, fun magic. It's a show from five to 105. I guarantee that everyone will have the time of their life. Guarantee that. Uh, but right now, I'll do a little magic for you. And notice on this stage, we don't have a formal theater, so we'll have to improvise. But I do need somebody from the audience to come up and have, oh, oh, all the kids have to go potty at once. Isn't that nice? Well, for, you look strange. Yeah, could you stand up and show everybody what you look like? There you go. Isn't that nice? Okay, thank you very much. There you go. That's good, wonderful. You look strange. Hi. Okay, that's fine. I need somebody from the audience with their hands down. I need somebody who's sitting nice, straight up, big smiles, and who's absolutely quiet. Look at the adults. Hey, he's got something here. Yeah, you bet. Let me just see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, you got a great smile right over there. Come on over here. You, sir. Yes, yes. Come on up over here. This will be fine. You can just climb right over. If you want to come up the stairs, you can go this side, or you can come up this side, either one you want. Hot dog. Welcome to the Arts Launch. This is good. Hey, how are you? Hi, fun. Good for you. Look at Look, look. Who's that? <laughs> That's right, look at all these other characters. He's a weird one. That's the anti-conjurer, that's Dan Sperry. He does some really weird magic. This is the inventor, this is Kevin James, all of his own illusions. Uh, oh my goodness, yes, this is the mentalist. He's very strange. This is Andrew Basso, better than Houdini ever was. He's gonna be in our show. Uh, also Ben Black, the warrior, and Yuho Jin, the world's greatest sleight of hand artist. This show's got something for everybody. You're gonna have a good time at it, I know you are. That's cool, hey Flash, come on over here. Wonderful. Let me show you that smile that I told everybody about. Show the smile. Do it. That is so cool. Good. What's your name? Richard. Richard. Wonderful. How old are you? Six. Really good. Are you married? No. Well, I just thought I'd ask. You know, it doesn't matter to me. Look, I got a little present for you. Got a little present for you. What's your favorite color in the whole wide world? Red. Red. Perfect. I got a little yellow balloon. <laughs> Wow, we got multiple balconies here. That goes straight up. Good. What is your favorite animal in the whole wide world? A snake. Good. Here you go. <laughs> it's a good snake. It's the... Smile that way, would you? Good. Okay. He just smiles and then... <laughs> a snake. Well, good. I'm going to make you a dog, and you're going to like it. Not a lot, but you'll like it. Here we go. <laughs> okay, okay, not real magic, but you're gonna like it. Here, go chat, hold on to that. Ta da! No problem, come on over here. Come here, come here, Richard. What's your second favorite color in the whole wide world? Uh, red. <laughs> Yellow. Do you see what we're talking about here? Yeah, it's good. You just smile big, smile big, good man. There he is. I was doing this for a state trooper the other night. Thanks, kids. The guy pulled me over, stuck his head in my window, said, did you know you were going 35 miles over the speed limit? Here. Hold on to both, quick. You gotta be quick like a ninja. You gotta be like Flash, like that guy, fast. He just, 
Okay, here we go. Last time. What is your third favorite color? Yellow. Yes! <laughs> Thank goodness. I was getting worried. Any more in there? No? Thank goodness. We're almost done, and this is a present for you, okay? But it's a magical present, and I'll show you why. There it is, it's a hot dog of the tail. No problem. We make a little thing, it's amazing what people will sit and watch, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I performed this for four US presidents the other day. They were stone-faced. Here you go, take a look. Oh, wait a minute! Smile, look that way, good. Watch, it does tricks up on your hind legs. Watch this, roll over. Oh, oh, oh. watch this, play dead. <laughs> Ta-da! Boy, am I sorry. I'm so sorry, you know, that was so mean. I didn't even think about it. I'm so sorry. Hold out your hand. There you go. Good, thanks for coming up, I really appreciate it. I got three adults going, you know, that's really hilarious, that's very funny. All right. Luckily for you, Richard, I have a doggy bag. Put it in the doggy bag, you take this home, place the little doggy underneath your pillow before you wake up I mean, tomorrow morning. Do you know what you'll find when you get up? Huh? Huh? A $10 bill. Where's mom and dad? Where anybody here? Good, $10 bill, remember that. You're holding up a whole nother finger. Check this out, watch. Take a look. Blow it up with the breath of life and he's back. I know. So there you go, that's, the, uh, that's Jeff's own popped and restored. Uh, balloon dog. Now, there's a few things that I want to point out to you, first of all. Uh, well, the first thing that I want to point out to you is look at how incredible he is as a kid's entertainer. You would think that he's one of the greatest kid's entertainers of all time. Any kid's entertainer could take that bit, put it into their show and have an amazing six or seven minutes of their show. And I know that because I am a kid's entertainer. I have put that in my show and I have an amazing six or seven minutes. I love that trick. And again, just like all the other routines that we saw, there's no table, there's no props, there's no case that he's bringing something from. He's just got a little brown bag. He's putting the little brown bag down and that's it. That's all he's doing. Little brown bag, a few balloons in the brown bag and that's it. Um, so the the stage is very clear, which allows the focus to be on uh, to be on him. The next thing I want to point out is that, you know, I've I've heard stage magicians in the past say that uh, you can't be a kids entertainer and and be a stage entertainer because you're going to be too silly, and uh, you can always tell a kids entertainer when they're trying to perform on stage to a corporate audience or something like that. And they also I've heard people say. I'm not going to do kids magic. I'm not going to entertain kids because I won't be taken seriously as a, as a serious magician. Um, well, you know, here's one of the most successful magicians of all time doing what is in essence a kid's trick, presenting it in a very kid's way and people are loving it. I don't think any single person in that audience is going, you know what, that guy's not very good. I thought he was good, but then he, go, he went and did that trick with that kid, and now I think he's terrible. Said nobody in that audience ever. I, I really do believe that if you're a stage performer, if you're a closer performer, and I've mentioned this time and time again, you should have the ability to perform for children. And the reason you should have the ability to perform to children is because there's always children in shows one way or another. And it's always a nice thing to do to bring them up and have a special performance for them. I'm not saying that you need to become a clown and you need to walk out on stage in a clown outfit and start juggling, uh, spinning plates and putting custard pies in people's faces. No, 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 not at all. But what I am saying is don't be afraid of bringing kids up on stage because when you bring kids up on stage and you have that moment... Um, that moment right there, 
Um, it, it just elevates the whole show. I remember watching David Penn perform his Illusion show many, many years ago, and he had this moment in the show where he brought two kids up and he did Just Passing Through by Kavari. And that was my favorite part of the whole show. Even though there were all these illusions, which were amazing, because David Penn is an incredible illusionist. Um, my favorite part was Just Passing Through by, by Kavari. And he had this really special moment with the kid on stage, or the two kids with him on stage. And, and this is the same with Jeff Hobson here. He's got this routine. So if you, what we learn from this is if you're a stage performer and, and you are ever gonna be in a situation where there's gonna be kids in your show, think about a routine that you can do that's going to involve them into your show as well. And the other thing is, like I said, there's very minimal space, just like all of the routines that you're seeing, he's not got props, he's not even gonna case on stage with him but you also don't see him using anything that even looks like a prop you know the card in mouth it's a pack of cards uh the egg bag it's just a little cloth bag the cigarette routine it's just a cigarette this he's not using a change bag um at all he's not using a classic change bag because that would make him look it's obviously a magician's prop right and, and there's no problem with magician's props but i love the way that jeff tries and i don't know if this is a conscious thing or not but every time i've seen him he tries to make it look like he's just grabbed something and walked out on stage now i know from watching his lecture that that's a specially constructed bag that takes a long time to construct but because it doesn't look like a magic bag with a handle and change bag or anything it becomes even more impressive for the adults and the kids look at that reaction when the dog comes back to life at the end of that routine both from the kids and from the adults they're like <gasps> They don't expect that to happen. It's just a brown paper bag. <sighs> He's blowing into the bag. Funny. <sniffs> Boom. Comes back to life. And then when it comes back to life, gives the kid the balloon, and then that's it. An amazing routine. Think about the tricks that you do in your show. Now, sometimes you want to use big props. I know I, I like to use big props. But sometimes maybe there's a way that we can change the change bag for... Um, you know, like a, a regular looking paper bag. That's definitely something that we can learn from Jeff. And also, as I say, the most important thing is having the ability to interact with every single spectator on stage. One of uh, Jeff's key skills, as far as I'm concerned, is his audience management and his ability to connect with an audience. Within seconds, he's connected with an audience and he's just made them laugh. And we, uh, and, and you know, you see this again in this final performance right now. We're going to look at the final video. Now, this is uh, Jeff's performance of Kate, Stan and Edith. Now, Kate, Stan and Edith is a classic routine. I've seen Tom, uh, Tom. I've seen Doc Eason do this. I've seen several magicians over the years do this. If you don't know, it's a really funny stage bit. It's uh, like a story deck type thing using jumbo cards. Uh, with some magical moments built into it. Um, Jeff does this brilliantly. Let's have a look at a performance of it, and then we'll talk about favorite things. I'd like to sh tell you a story using cards, rhyme, and wit. I've composed it myself, and that is no shock. <laughs> this story you'll find of two gals and a guy is a soap opera of sorts. Now let's find out why. The first two of three are husband and wife, a king and a queen for most of their life. Now, he called her Edith, and she called him Stan. Yes, she was the queen, and Stan was her man. Now, the king could smile, but the queen she could not, for it's a child they wanted, but could not be got. Oh, the king, he was potent, virile, well-made. It was the queen who was sterile. You see, she is spayed. It gets worse. The king yearned for his son, someone to call his name, and so it was Edith that he started to blame. Oh, the fighting, the yelling, Edith could take it no more. She called Stan a bum and his mistress a horrible person. <laughs> yes, she knew about Kate, a pretty young lass with the face of a queen and a firm, shapely nose. Was Kate that Stan lusted for, but still loved his queen, so a threesome they became with the king in between. The King Stan Trio they came to be known. <laughs> but a king with two queens would be rocking the throne. You see, lust and greed don't mix well with fate, and soon it was Edith who lusted for Kate. <laughs> 
The two queens in love soon sent Stan away, but suddenly he returned. He wanted to play. <laughs> they refused him quick, sent him over the castle walls, and should he return, they'd cut off his bald head. <laughs> Well, Stan was persistent, he wanted to stay, and so he returned when Kate was away. A fight broke out, Edith screamed, yelled, and hissed, not to mention the king, he was pretty upset. <laughs> well, Kate did return, much to Edith's delight, but what of old King Stan, nowhere in sight? So we're left with two queens, rather happy and gay, but what of this King Stan, he had not had his way. So what is the moral of the story, the lesson that we learn, of Kate, Stan, and Edith, and the tables that they turn? Well, I've told it to Stan, and I'll tell it to you. You can't have your Kate and Edith, too. <laughs> So my guess is that you've you've never seen Kate Stan and Edith before. You you're wetting yourself. The first time I saw this, I thought it was so funny. The first time I saw Jeff Hobson do it, I've seen many magicians do it. Nobody does it as good as Jeff. And um, you know, I think the uh, I, I've talked in the past about how I'm not a great storyteller. I've talked about in the past about there's not many story routines I do because it's not it doesn't fit my style. Um, and then I watched. Jeff do something like this and I realised, you know what, that is my style if I felt like I could get away with it like Jeff does. And 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 I think that it always makes me go back and try to learn this particular routine, but I'm always convinced I'm never going to do it as well as Jeff Hobson. The routine is just exceptional in every way, shape and form. But it's his delivery of the lines, go back and listen to his delivery. The, 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 the delivery of each individual line gets a laugh. It's just so funny the way he presents it. It's so funny the way that he does the routine. And, and it's a perfect example of, again, and sorry to labour the point, but it's a perfect example of knowing your character and getting um, the, the spectator involved in... Um, sorry, it, it's about knowing your character and getting the audience drawn in and making sure that the magic that you do fits your character, right? In this case, this story and the way he presents it fits him perfectly. It fits him to a T. And you can see that he's delivered that many, many times. And, 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 and he knows exactly what to say. He knows exactly how to say it. it you can see the importance of flight time by watching this video. Um, I've said it before on this channel. I'll say it again. There's no substitute for flight time. The more you do something, the better you're going to get at it. And then eventually, if we do it enough times, we might get as good as Jeff Hobson has done this particular room right, routine right here. And again, please notice, he's not using any tables. He's not using any cases. It's not like he's taking those cards out of his uh, case. They're there in his pocket. He walks out on stage, takes them out of his pocket, and he's good to go. Um, I hope, if you've seen Jeff Hobson before, I hope this video has has uh, brought back some memories or made you think about some stuff. Uh, but if you've never seen Jeff Hobson, yes, I hope this video has made you think about some stuff. But I hope that Jeff now has a bunch of new fans because people have watched this that have never seen Jeff Hobson before. The guy is an absolute legend. He's one of the, if not the funniest stage comedy magician in the world. And uh, by all accounts, a really nice guy as well at least he comes across that way in interviews tutorials and every time i've ever seen him anyway let's wrap this up so there you go that's another five by five in the bag thank you very much for watching uh all about jeff hobson now i'm going to be back again very very soon with another video but please do me a favor you want to see more videos like this like the video subscribe to the channel leave a comment down below. I'm gonna be back again soon with another video. Uh, if you haven't already done so, go check out The Netrix. It's www.thenetrix.com, that's www.thenetrix.com. Go check it out and see what all the fuss is about, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great Monday evening. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm.